So we found a uh, chance to present these uh, rarely heard compositions by Chilea, performed by a tenor who also happens to be a scholar and researcher of musicology, uh, a unique opportunity that we wanted to share with all of you. So we are, we are delighted uh, that we are able to do this here. Um, the book has been presented in many other parts of Italy and the world, and we are delighted to be the New York stop for these presentations. I want to introduce, um, before we begin our program, I want to give you just some sense of uh, who Chilea was. And in doing this, I'm using largely the words by Maestro Filianotti. So in this case, the tenor is also the author of the libretto. I might not take away any credit from Maestro Filianotti. Francesco Cilea was born in Palmi, the Giocalabria, and immediately an in interruption. Am I a pedantic professor? Of uh, <laughs> one line, I've already stopped. <laughs> maybe one line. Yes, uh, there is something in common, of course, between uh, Cilea and Messapiliano. They're both uh, from Calabria. So that's one of the reasons also why Messapiliano is so strong in the connection with uh, Francesco Cilea. On July 25th, 1866, and from childhood, she had a great interest uh, in music, and he was particularly affected by the finale of Norma by Vincenzo Bellini that he heard perform, not in a great theater, but by the band of his local hometown. Uh, he went on to study in the prestigious Conservatory of Naples, San Pietro Maiella, uh, where he earned a degree in composition with uh, highest honors. Um, his first opera, Gina, was written in 1889, and Latita in 1892. And Chilea name is connected, though, to two operas mainly that you probably all have heard of, if not heard the opera itself. La Lesiana, 1897, and Adriana Le Couvreur, uh, 1902. These are definitely these two operas that you can still find today uh, in the program of the major opera houses. Uh, Chilea final opera, Gloria, 1907, although conducted at its premiere by the great Arturo Toscanini, and maybe uh, Giuseppe will tell us something about this stormy relationship between these two men, um, never received the praise of, of uh, Adriana, but it's still a very, very interesting opera. During the last years of his life, and following his death, the city of Palmi, that, that is the hometown, received uh, first from the composer and then from the wife, um, the whole collection of uh, letters, uh, correspondence, memorabilia, and the personal library of Maestro Cilea. And it's thanks to this bequest that it has been possible uh, to study, edit, and finally publish the complete compositions for voice and piano, uh, comprising art songs, sacred works, and vocals. That, that's what we're going to hear tonight. So it's thanks to the donation of uh, Chilea and his family 
to the city of Palma. Palma, that all these materials still together, and that's basically the gold mine where Maestro Figuerotti digged to find the material that we're going to uh, hear tonight. Even though Chilea's name is known uh, today primarily through two of the, um, uh, of, the, of the operas that we mentioned, La Lesiana, and many of you probably remember Il Lamento di Federico, that is one of the most uh, important tenor arias in it, and Adriano de Couvreur, it should be noted that while Chile operatic work were created in less than 25 years, his career of composer spanned for 50 years. So he did other things in the other 25 years of his life. And um, um, his education uh, in the classic and, in, um, and his enduring admiration um, for the news of Bellini, remember as a young boy who was listening to Bellini that he decided that that's what he wanted to do, to be a composer. Um, so all these different components, these different influences, play a role in creating uh, the artist that, uh, that Chilea would become. Among the pieces that we're going to hear tonight and that are published in this book, um, many of, of these were previously unpublished. Uh, Romanza, Bionda Larva, Serenata, and so on. And, and this first uh, part of the production of Chilea uh, follows the uh, late romantic salon song tradition. So it's a very specific um, subgenre. After that, immediately after, chronologically, you have the uh, fertile terrain of early 20th century Italian chamber uh, works. So there is an evolution from those first uh, body of work to the second, and there are uh, Alba Novella, Vita Breve, and so on. And then there is another, a further development uh, that brings to a more elaborate piano complement that enhances the text. And finally, we come to the last body of works. Um, there are the sacred works um, and the vocalize, uh, and we are also going to hear something from that. And um, we want to conclude this presentation, very brief presentation of Chilea, with his own words. In, a, in an interview to the um, daily of Palermo, Lora, Chilea in 1913 wrote, the true instrument for the expression of passion is the divine human voice, which no instrument will ever write. I think it's beautiful. To, to close this presentation of Chilea with his statement of commitment to the divine human voice. The, and, the, and the fact that he pays homage to the, to, to the human voice as the most perfect and unrivaled instrument ever. Um, so after this presentation, again, the libretto is not mine, uh, I have had the great pleasure to introduce to you uh, the people that are going to bring back and make alive uh, some of the uh, work that we presented in, uh, in our auditorium. At the piano, we are going to have pianist Edward Bath, who was characterized by uh, Le Libre Belgique as a pianist who knows how to ally fury and restraint, elegance and lyrical effusion, and was praised in the Cleveland Plain Dealer for playing fire, excitement, and a real sense of grandeur. He appears regularly in concert with established artists and emerging talent, and has been heard in such venues as the Teatro Colón, the Bonnet, the Festival de Nodier, uh, the Philippe Collection, and Colorado Hall. He is active as a chamber musician, and as such, has shared the stage with members of the Boston Symphony Orchestra, the Philadelphia Orchestra, the Cleveland Orchestra, and the Chicago Symphony. He is also a stench advocate of modern music. Uh, Back is a professor at Ohio State University School of Music and is a regular faculty member at Prelude to Performance in New York City. <coughs> and I've already mentioned him several times, but now it's time to introduce him formally and uh, a bit more uh, coherently. Giuseppe Viglianotti is one of the preeminent lyric tenors of his generation. The beauty of his voice, the passion, the lyricism, and his artistry, and the dramatic fervor of his approach to the stage have won him widespread critical and popular praise. Since his professional debut in 1998, 
is that Villanotis emerge as a beacon of style and nuance in a wide-ranging repertoire. While the majority of his performances have centered on the bel canto and later 19th century lyric Italian and French works, he has also successfully essayed roles by Cherubini and Mozart through those of such 20th century masters as Strauss, Debussy, and Stravinsky. Uh, Maestro Villanotti has appeared uh, from the Bolshoi in Moscow, here at the Metropolitan Opera House, that when we met him, uh, he was appearing in La Rondine. Uh, and uh, he also performed the Wiener Staats Opera, Covent Garden, Opera Nationale de Paris, and both the Deutsche Opera and the Staats Opera Berlin. Uh, he's also a recording artist who has published um, CDs and DVDs with a variety of the most important uh, classical music labels in the world. And without further ado, now I really ask you to welcome very warmly Maestro Edward Bach and Giuseppe Figliano. Thank you. 
We now have Mazurka for solo piano. Mazurka was composed in Fiesole in August 1904 and was conceived to be insert, inserted into an operetta in the Sonzogno catalog since it indicates stage action in which the singer must move like a dancer. Having loved Chopin from childhood, Chilea composed three mazurkas as well as an impromptu mazurka for solo piano in different periods of his artistic life. This composition is a simple, playful piece whose lyrics describe the dance itself, jumping and sliding, with markings to indicate the rhythmic profile. Mazurka. Text by Villa. Flexible and playful, the easy mazurka. You can jump to it, you can slide to it. It seems like a Turkish dance. It has an odd rhythm. Here's how you do it. That is two on the downbeat, like this. One on the up. One, two, three. One, two, three. Next piece, Nel Ridestarmi. In October 1921, Chile wrote to the poet Felice Sofre that he had composed a song to his text, Nel Ridestarmi. This song marks not only a new beginning in the relationship between Chilea and poetry for music, but is also a first attempt to move into 20th century vocal music, a genre with higher acoustic ambition and less commercial impact. As in contemporary instrumental composition and already many pages of, of his final opera, Gloria, Chilea based his new style on the aesthetic and linguistic model of French Impressionism. His private library contains a large number of scores by Claude Debussy, certainly the best known among the composers of the new generation. Unlike Chilea's previous work, he now models his pianistic writing on Debussy with undulating and modulating sextuplets that from beginning to end define the overall tone of the piece. The sense of rebirth and the new start is reflected perhaps not coincidentally in the text of the song, which narrates the awakening from a painful lethargy. Upon awakening, text by Felice Sofre. Strange but now the world seems beautiful to me, and I loathed it yesterday. How long I slept, and how deeply. My soul, where were you? Where were you when, like a sponge in the sea in its meanderings, the heart pulsated without feeling, desires, or sorrows? Where were you while my mind made itself deaf to thoughts, like, harmon like a harmonica that no one plays? My soul, where were you? 
At the end of 1934, the National Fascist Union of Musicians commissioned Chilea to compose a version for voice and piano of Nanna Cunqueta, a traditional Piedmontese lullaby. That commissioned by the National Secretary of the Union, Giuseppe Moulet, actually sounds like something more than a polite request. Mm -hmm. Since this is an easy job, please see that you obtain from Maestro Chilea what I've already gotten from a dozen of his colleagues and we deliver it within 24 hours, <laughs> literally. A sort of edict, therefore, which explains the composer's handwritten note at the bottom of the same letter, delivered within 12 hours. <laughs> Chilea was able to give the beautiful Savoyard melody an ideal setting, softening it without covering the charm of the unadorned, timeless folk melody. The charm is all in the balance between the sustained feeling evoked by pedal notes and the delicate rhythmic accent at the beginning of each bar, as well as the subtle canvas of well-calibrated expressive movement of the inner voices. A traditional Sauvayard lullaby. Sleep, little one. Mama has gone to mass. Daddy has gone to turn to buy some puppets. Go to sleep, my little one. Here is a nice little kid.
dolce amor di povertà. Ci lei ha chiesto only to set to music a few verses of the anonymous medieval poem Dolce amor di povertà, Sweet Love of Poverty, which in its entirety consists of 24 stanzas. Composed at his home in Varazze, Liguria, in August 1943, this song was published by Ricordi in 1950, the year of Chilea's death. The last art song of Chilea is a witty praise of poverty in which the vaguely archaic verses inspire the composer to experiment with an imaginative revival <coughs> of archaical form. <coughs> Sorella, ben ti va. 
piece for piano solo is called Gaiezza from Vocalizzi da Concerto. Francesco Cirea was not only a composer but also a teacher of harmony and composition as well as a conservatory director. In 1889, immediately after graduating from the Conservatory San Piero Maiella in Naples, Cilea was appointed professor of harmony and piano at the same institution for three years. Subsequently, he was professor of harmony at the Regio Istituto Musicale di Firenze for 10 years. He went on to be director of the Conservatory Vincenzo Bellini in Palermo and to direct the Conservatory of San Piero Maiella in Naples, which under his wise administration of almost 20 years, achieved an era of prestige with the founding of its historical museum and the creation of a symphony orchestra. In an interview for the Sicilian newspaper Lora, as the new director of the conservatory in Palermo, Chile expressed himself as follows. My ambition is only one, to produce artists, performers, and composers. I desire that the young people leaving our school, going to Rome, Milan, wherever, bring honor to their land and to their conservatory. Given this premise, it is easy to understand Chilea's achievement in composing those vocalists, which rise beyond mere pedagogical exercises to heights of artistic nobility, requiring not only an ironclad vocal technique, but also great stylistic and interpretive skills. Maestro Edward Beth right, will play an arrangement of a movement from the Vocalizzi da Concerto entitled Gaizza. <clears throat> Sweet scent. 
consented to caress my face. That morning, the sky seemed clearer and the trees leafier. Harmonious sounds of unknown sweetness vibrated in the pure air. Renewed, my blood flowed through every vein. My heart pounded. A strange elation took hold of me. The enchanting caress of love had finally reached me. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. Uh, we have time now for about 5-10 minutes of, of questions since we explained that uh, the singer is also a scholar and a researcher. It's thanks to him that we are able to have uh, the edition of uh, this song in the book that is on the uh, podium there and that is also available upstairs for sale. So, um, I would start with asking if you have any question for... Yes. May I ask you a question on, yeah, vocal, on vocal technique? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, a, a youth singer. I've been singing professionally for just a couple of years. And um, started like, and the first teacher, you know, like there's one school of like with the E vowel of being very wide, very bright. That you, I see like, you know, you have that sort of smile. And then, then the, uh, you go into these companies, everybody wants to be vertical and very all and with your B and 
What are your thoughts what, what uh, and what do you gain? It depends. <laughs> what do you want to sing? You want to sing it properly? As in Italian style, you have to sing it brighter, not darker. Uh, there is a new fashion today of the very dark voice. I remember my first teacher was Alfredo Graus. He told me, you know, a tenor is a tenor. It's not a baritone. <laughs> if you want to listen to a baritone, <laughs> let's, uh, let's change aria <laughs> and singer. So mm -hmm. the, the voice has to be, uh, so the best Italian tradition is a loud revolve, Philippe Pesky, it was a very ringing voice. Because the voice has to be like a laser going this way to, to be in a big room, clear, uh, like uh, uh, a resonant. A dark voice is from here to there, no more. It's good for a microphone today. But uh, in my opinion, the old, the old Italian school technique is always with, uh, if you see Callas singing, she was always in this way. This is the position that put your voice in a, in a brighter light. So we have two levels, one up here, right, and the third that is this of the voice. So that's part of it. But never one down or against the other one. So this is uh, uh, years and years of uh, thinking and discussing with many other singers and teachers. And um, I can tell you that that's why the lighter boys, uh, they have more career of years because they keep higher and lighter the voice. So I hope you will you will follow this career, but the, this way of singing. But you know, there is not only one way. If you see the the German tradition, it's another one. The the French tradition in singing, it's another one. The Italian tradition has to be this way. Pavarotti was a very clear, light voice. That's the the Italian way. Yes, sir. Thank you very much for bringing us these songs by a composer who I think in America at least is very underrated and, and, and neglected and undervalued. Um, I'm wondering whether you think we'll ever see or at least hear a concert production of Gloria, which is a wonderful opera, I think. Yeah, I think Gloria is it, it, a, a really good production. It is a really good <coughs> opera. And uh, Chilea was a so sorrow for said, yes, Adriana Le Correre is my well-known opera, but I think I gave everything of myself in this opera. It's a very difficult opera. First of libretto, the libretto is a little bit weird. Um, so today we want to see an, an, an acting that is uh, particularly appealing, and Gloria doesn't have that kind of uh, thing. But musically, it's really, it's a really rich music inside, I hope. But you need a very big bass, a very big soprano, a very big tenor, a very big baritone. So it's not easy. It's like, it's like the Verismo operas. They are not easy to, to find the singers that way. And I hope that today, this year, is uh, the anniversary of Chilea birth. So 150. That's why I decide to, to do its two years to thinking about this book. To, uh, so maybe some theater will, will uh, do this project. <laughs> Maestro, talking about this book, you worked for two years researching in the uh, library uh, that, that Chile left to his own uh, hometown. Uh, tell us something about your own relationship to Chile. It's like the quintessential southern Italian uh, composer, even if his career developed also in Florence and other parts, but like there is Calabria, Sicilia, Napoli, um, and you are from Calabria as well. So your own personal uh, relationship with him, when did you first hear of him, and then when and how did you decide to make this book? Um, I remember this story that uh, I was a young student in the Conservatory of Reggio Calabria, I was uh, 17 years old. And my teacher said, okay, there is the first concert of 
so you, you will sing L'Animo Stanca. L'Animo Stanca is uh, an arioso taken from uh, Adriana. Was something short, but I fell in love immediately with that kind of music. And, uh, and so I remember uh, uh, that was my first experience with the Chilea. And after, immediately after, a few years, uh, uh, Il Lamento di Federico, uh, La Solita Storia del Pastore from L'Arlesiana. So the two areas bring me to this composer. And um, I, in 2006, I, I had this concert, uh, for, uh, concert form of L'Arlesiana in Freiburg. And so I said, okay, let's go to the, to the uh, museum in Palmi, of Chile, where there, is, there, is many things, there are many things uh, about Chile. So I, I, I took many, many manuscripts, and one was Alba Novella, nice. Why I start to read the words. I said, oh, that's really interesting. I, I, I can remember that these words, I read it in another place. And it was one year before, in 2005, that I asked to the conservatory in Naples to give me the first version of the libretto in four acts of L'Arlesiana. And there was this area inside. We have to remember that L'Arlesiana was performed by a, a young Caruso and make a big success of this famous tenor, well, the, the first modern uh, uh, tenor of our time. And uh, so Caruso sang it the first time. And after, we don't know why, maybe, maybe Sonzonia said, that we don't, you have, uh, you, uh, you wrote a very beautiful Lamento di Federico, we don't want another aria for the tenor. So Chilea take out this aria and uh, rebuilt it for an art song. Uh, so in that moment, I said, I want to reorchestrate it and put in the same position of the opera. And it's beautiful because it's inside a duet between the soprano. So Federico, the story is uh, like the story of Bertel. He fell in love. For a woman, it's a little bit a maitress. So it's nice. So the mother said, no, you cannot never marry her. You have to marry this young and beautiful peasant. And he said, OK, I will. But in his dreams, there is this beautiful woman from Arles. And so in this particular moment, uh, he's there and thinking, oh, I'm, I feel really OK now. I feel that love is come to me. And, uh, uh, and I feel so happy. And there is this mixture between uh, nature and, uh, and uh, feelings. That's the, the other aria that is the opposite with uh, the first aria. The first aria is a very touristic one. It's a, a very dramatic one. This one is a very Debussy style. So I was glad to, to, to do this, uh, uh, to discover this new aria. So I said, why I don't, do, I don't prepare a book and ask to record it to edit in this? So this is as I, I start to think about this book. Yes, Claire. Yes. Also, with regard to your book, other than Alba and Novella, do you have a favorite piece and why? Um, the, the, uh, there are many. So one is Alba Novella, for sure, but because it's uh, taken from La Lesiana. The other one is Dolce Amor di Pobertade. You know, uh, there is a sad story. This, uh, this song is uh, about poverty. And uh, Chilea, at the last year of Chilea, they were in poverty. So he wrote this, it, that, and the, it, it was published in 1950, the day, or the, the, the year where, uh, of his death. So it's, it's nice that uh, he want in this simplicity of the line to express the feeling that is the feeling of an artist. 
yeah, you can have glory, everything in your life. But after, when you finish to perform, you have only poverty. If you don't go on and try to focus your life in other things, that's the, the, a little bit something sad, because you have to spend all your life for that, to dedicate all your life to that. Mm -hmm. At the end, when that is finished, you say, what I have? Poverty. But maybe poverty is something of positive. So there is a double here. <laughs> Today is not a positive thing, but there is another kind of poverty, not only of money, but the poverty is also simplicity, simplicity of uh, soul, simplicity of living, simplicity of uh, thinking. So it's also freedom. And that's why I think this is the most beautiful song inside this. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, how was Chilea in his personal life? What kind of man was Chilea? Do, you, do we know anything about yeah. him? Yeah. Chilea was the opposite than Puccini. If you compare Puccini, <laughs> Chilea was another. So that's why Puccini grow, grow, composing and big success everywhere, everywhere. And, uh, Chilea was a shy. Um, and, and there is a story with Toscanini during the, the premiere of Gloria at La Scala. Toscanini said uh, during the rehearsals, away the Chilea out, no one can listen this. Uh, uh. Okay, bye bye. <laughs> so that was the personality of uh, Chilea. For example, there is a very, there is a difficult part in the aria tenor of La, La Adriana. And a tenor asked him, can you change this? Uh, it's a la bemolle there, and uh, from, taken from nothing. So, ah, and, and he, he did another version for the tenor with the la down. So, <laughs> and he was there very humble and uh, trying because um, Stefano uh, read something. He said, the human voice is the most beautiful expression Heart of music. So he believed in that. So the most beautiful part in Chilea compositions is about what you express, it's soul. So it is, and, and this was, uh, he had a problem with the mother. Uh, he, the mother got crazy when he was a child. So he lived with the father. And after, uh, he went immediately in Naples to study there. In a college, so there is always this this um, this idea of the mother in his composition, and uh, these uh, so uh, was uh, it was not an easy life for him. Yes. Did you ever meet Magda Olivero, <coughs> and if so, did you discuss Chilea with her? Yeah, I did. Sure, and I just, I started with her too. So she told me she told me that. Uh, Chilea was uh, the most, most uh, humble person. He was in the, at the piano, listened to her uh, performing uh, Adriana and try to, uh, to, to make the best, uh, the best uh, Adriana for her. So um, he did the same with the Tito Schipa for La Vesiana. So he was always there trying to play, and it's nice because he was a good pianist too. So we have uh, two recordings, one with him and Caruso, uh, Non più nobile from Adriana, and we have another one with, um, with uh, De Lucia and the song I, I sang now, Lontananza, was written for him. So uh, Magda, Magda told me that um, uh, what was really, really important for, uh, for uh, uh, Chilea in, in, a, in a beautiful line is not only to do, to, to put there only beautiful sound, but to make the test out. Because with the text, you can go inside a person. If you do only produce only beautiful sound, there is nothing there, but you have to give a sense of everything inside. So this is uh, this was important for him. So 
It's peculiar. Yes. Grazie maestro. Could you tell us a bit about um, the uh, the language of the text, which none of them were in the standard modern Italian. They were in the, the local languages of the Piemontese, the various ah. languages. That, that is a, a, a strange case because it's a dialect, a slang. Uh, it's, uh, I try to, to, to make, uh, um, uh, it's, it's not easy, it's not possible to translate that. Nanna concreta. It's, uh, concreta is uh, something that you can hold in a hand. So uh, there is not really a, 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 an English word. So I, I, I said, sleep, 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 my, <laughs> my dear daughter, something like that, because it's not possible. So it's something that, um, uh, uh, that also I don't understand, because I'm from south, and this uh, dialect is from the north. So I had to research, research, make, research to understand what's, what, what is kunketa. Mm -hmm. Kunketa, it's something that you put in a hand. It's so, so small. Turin, uh, um, uh, we say in Italian, tu, Torino. Turin, it's diet. Uh, right. Yeah, it's, uh, yeah, because in the north, we had many, many influences from French. So Turin, uh, nana concreta la ma e andaita, andaita with the e when you never say that andata. So it's something that it was nice to 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 discover uh, chapa. Chapa means take, take this chapa, chapa. But we, we use another word in the south Italy. So for example, chapa chapa is from the north. Uh, Bazin. Yes. So it's a uh, it's menin, ninin, small one. It's it's like French. French uh, is uh, so. Uh, you, uh, this is a very nice, uh, a, a very nice uh, lullaby that um, um, so I think uh, I I think also uh, yeah no I didn't do the, the Italian translation. But uh, in this case, also in Italian, from the south, I cannot understand that. Yes, ma'am. I wanted to ask you, uh, did you write the La Résienne before or after Gizet wrote his uh, La Résienne? Uh, ha, ha. So I'm sure that is uh, is uh, after, because La Résienne, of uh, Chile was in uh, 1897, and I think La Blaisienne is before. Before. Is it a Libretto? No. No, no. But uh, it's a Libretto. It's, it's, mm. I love Libretto. It's beautiful. But it's another, another thing. Mm. Any other question? Master. As I mentioned, uh, you have this uncommon training that on top of being uh, a graduate of the conservatory where you studied voice, at the same time you also went to university where you study literature, history, and all these things that you studied came in handy when you had to work on this edition of this book. What do you think that a preparation like yours that leads you both to the performance on the stages of the most important theaters in the world and at the same time to libraries and archives adds to your style of performing and of singing? Well, I can say, in French said, better comme un tenor. <laughs> Sometimes it's better than stupid like a tenor. And you want to start with that? <laughs> I want to start with that because less you know, better you perform. <laughs> it's always this way because the less you know, Naturally, you are. There's more space for the resonance. And the <laughs> more you know, start thinking. But you know, if you want to give it a deep, deep interpretation on the stage, uh, this is this is a good training because you know about the history of the opera, how uh, it, what what every word is there is inside there. But 
again, for this work, it is, is important. If you don't have this kind of uh, knowledge, you cannot write uh, and do the, the book like that. But performing, it's a little bit strange. Many, many singers, uh, you talk with them, and you say, oh, they are fantastic on the stage in the real life. <laughs> you were there singing that, in that way? And you are so simple. You look so normal. <laughs> and someone is complicated instead of better thoughts. And it uh, doesn't depend really about that. It's, it's, uh, it's something that unknown. And uh, for example, many people told me that the callas it's, she was an animal on, on the stage. It look, it, she looked like uh, something, she had so many things to say, to say, to express. And in the normal life, she was a really mm, easy, normal, normal woman. So, uh, because uh, staying up there, you really uh, express something that you don't know you have inside. That's strange. It's like to be in another planet. And so you can have the most knowledge, the most, you know everything about literature, music, and that. And there, it's, it's not enough. It's something that you have inside, and you born with that, that make you an artist. Not, not knowledge is really. And, and I think that with this uh, lesson of humility, that I've, after having studied for two years, that I'm not adding anything compared to my colleagues who know nothing. It's another uh, aspect of the style of Giuseppe Villanotti that we really uh, admire and uh, for which we are uh, very impressed. Um, again, it's going to be in 2017, the 150th anniversary. It is this year. This year is the 150th anniversary of the birth of Francesco Cilea. And normally when there is a birthday, the person we celebrate receives a present. But in this case, it's Cilea's birthday, Giuseppe prepared the present, and we received it. Because this is a present, a marvelous present, uh, that um, Giuseppe Figlianotti gave to Casa Italiana and to all of us. So for this, we thank him and Maestro Edward Bach very much for this wonderful evening. And with Juliette Capanci that gave uh, English voice to uh, the text. Thank you all very much. <laughs>